Okay, so you're good. Yeah, I'm doing great. How are you? How's your week going, Jeff? Um, it's going. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? It's good. It's going as well. So let me let me like introduce you first to my audience, Jeff, because um, you're one of the most um accomplished, talented, and amazing music photographers there are. Oh, thank you. Uh, point, point blank. Point blank. I mean, uh, later on, we're going to talk about your photography. I want to show you some of your photos and, and, and tell me what you were watching. And, but, uh, but, but let me just say that you captured the essence of an artist. Like, I really have not seen anybody, a, anybody do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank yeah. You it, it, it's unbelievable what you do. You, don't, it's, you really pull what they are out of them into a photos. What a gift, Jeff. So it's a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. However, I, I have to say that, um, you know, doing research and getting to know you a little bit, um, you're so much more than a photographer, Jeff. Ah. So, so, so much more. Uh, it's been fascinating to just, you know, learn more about you and, and, and know who you are and, and all that good stuff. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's to talk about. And by the way, a big shout out to John Oates because, um, he was a guest on our show, really one of the best guests we've had. And, and that's how we kind of connected because you posted something about him. And, and uh, it just seems like he, he would bring someone like you to, to, to our show. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, let's start with your life purpose, Jeff, because uh, uh -huh. your life purpose is, 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 is wonderful. It's simple, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's beautiful, right? It's to champion the greatness of others, right? Um, and you say you help people to know who they are so they can love, honor, and value themselves. Uh, that's a beautiful thing, Jeff. Uh, where, where does this come from? Like, when, when did you start having this as your purpose? Oh, geez. Um, a while back, my friend Craig Marshall, when I was living in Los Angeles, we were hanging out. We did a little thing together. And he said uh, to me, what, what do you think? What's your, what's your life purpose? And now I could break it down into what is my purpose as a photographer. Yeah. And then when I'm working with people uh, on a um, uh, different level, it could be, there's a purpose. And what I always came to as an artist is I thought about when another artist tells me, that, for example, the musician says, wow, I just booked this great gig at the Ryman. I'm going to be at the Ryman. I get so excited by that. And I'll say, wow, um, how can I help you do that? What, you know, what can we do together? And then I thought about it and I went, wow, it's, it's really the, to, to champion the greatness of others, for others to see their greatness in them. Mm -hmm. uh, the power in them, the uniqueness in them, themselves. Yeah. Um, because I had to do all that myself. Sure. I, had to, I had to find all of that myself over the years, you know. Um, so that's kind of how I came about it. I look at where I get excited, and that's a good way for people to see where do you get excited and I used to get excited when an artist would tell me um, something really wonderful. Like, I'm, I'm going on tour with the Smashing Pumpkins. Um, I'm going to be playing in their band. And then you get excited for that. Then you're seeing their greatness um, in, in that place. Same thing with doing photo shoots. Yeah. You know, trying to visualize together their greatness. Mm. Beautiful, 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 Jeff. And tell us a little bit about uh, about um, something you vaguely you vaguely touched on, and it's basically you you had a different career, uh, you mm -hmm. had a different journey going on, and then basically around the time you turned forty, you had this this big uh, pivot, right? Well, actually, it it goes back to when I was thirty three. Okay. And I was dating a woman who said to me. Uh, you hate your job, you hate your life. The only time you're ever happy is when you're with me. Mm. And I heard those words and I was, I was 33. I wasn't, I was doing photography. I was photographing her. Um, I went back to Parsons and studied with a guy by the name of Mario Cabrera for two years as a yeah. photojournalist. But it, was, it wasn't until um, 
1994, about three months after we broke up, that I was on the one train leaving the World Trade Center uh, to go home. And I closed my eyes and I heard that voice. I heard her voice say, you hate your job, you hate your life. The only time you're ever happy is when you're with me. And my eyes opened up and I literally said to myself, it's time to grow up. So I went home and I took out a legal pad and wrote at the top of the legal pad, what do I want to be when I grow up? And I listed all of these things that I could do in, in the corporate world, whatever. I was in the steamship. I was in the import export world. Become a, I knew so much of that, you know, eventually stay on, eventually maybe become vice president of the company. Who knows? But I made this long list. Photography was in there. Kept the list, kept the attitude, kept looking at it. Um, later on that evening, I looked at the list. And, <laughs> so anyway, I, I, and later that night, I just, that photography just came off the page. Wow. Yeah. And like literally, and I felt it in my heart, and I felt it in my soul. And right then and I, right then and there, I knew that um, that was it. What was the moment of pain, Jeff, in that? Because um, I know, like, uh, you know, there's people like Tony Robbins that they say that, like, you reach a point of ext where, the pain, where the pain of not changing would be worse than the pain of changing, basically. Like, it's like you have to. So I'm, I'm curious, what was your breaking mo point, your moment? Exactly what she said to me. You yeah. hate your job. You hate your life. The only time you're happy is when you're with me. I was at that job nine to five every day. Actually, I was leaving my apartment in New York City at like eight, seven thirty, not getting home until six thirty or seven. That's a huge chunk, and I was miserable. Sure. I sure. was I was miserable between nine and five, five days a week. Yeah. It was only on the weekends when I was with her that I let all of that go, and I was yeah. enjoying myself. And really what I really realized, and I, and I know who Tony Robbins is, but from what I've studied, yeah. Yeah, 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 I was not in alignment with my soul plan. Mm. I, my, well, even let's back out of that. I was just not in alignment with my purpose or what I should be doing. So those feelings that I was having of being miserable going to, doing that and living that life yeah. was telling me that I don't know how, why it's time to grow up came in, but it told me it's time to, it's time to move. Yeah. It's time to move. It's time to do something. It's time to do this. She was an angel that planted that seed. And so what I did the following day is that I immersed myself in to photography. Yeah. I have totally immersed myself into um, every waking hour other than the nine to five. I was, had my camera. Uh, I built a dark room. I yeah. bought lights. It was, I ate, slept, slept and drank photography nice. outside of the nine to five job. And even at lunchtime, yeah. I had my camera with me and I would go out and shoot for an hour at lunchtime. Amazing. You took massive action. And, and, and I just do it. Mario Cabrera once told me, if you, if you want to do this for a living, this is what it's going to take. And, and he, he, he told me that, but, that that was it you know and and um my father i wanted to quit my job right then and there mm -hmm. my father said you're not ready it pissed me off it bothered me a little bit that he said it but there's some truth to that and he was right yeah. so what i did from that moment and i didn't know when i was going to quit that job but right. i knew i was going to quit that job right but i didn't know when is that I just made a plan. 
I mapped out a plan of what I needed to do, what I wanted to do, what was important, down to financially and everything. I made this plan of what I needed to do to eventually leave that job and leave that life. Epic. And I, and I, and I did that and I created a portfolio. Um, I used to have photo parties on the weekends where I'd invite people over and I would shoot and we'd hang out till three, four, five in the morning. And then there were other weekends where I would, I, I built a dark room in my kitchen in my apartment in New York city where I just printed, you know, starting at, at, five o'clock at night in the winter till three in the morning. Yeah. And actually, if you look in my house right here, some of those photos back there is, yeah. were printed in that dark room. So I made this plan. And, um, and in that plan, I started getting work. Yeah. I started getting work. Uh, little things here and there, the New York Observer, I found me and I started getting work and, then um, one of the people at work said to me, what do you want to do with this photography stuff? I said, I love music. I want to shoot music. She introduced me to her friend at RCA Records, who was the <laughs> VP of classical. And I, said, and, and I said, can I bring my portfolio? And that was like two years into it. So I had a portfolio. Right. And dropped it off two weeks later. They called me and they hired me to shoot James Galway hmm. in Chicago. Nice. And I took all of that money and I set up a, a specific bank account for any money that I made outside of my salary. That bank account was just going to grow and grow and grow. And that was the money I was going to use to live on when I quit, quit my job. Nice. So it was, it was that, that was the, that was the process. But it's so important to, and I talk to people all the time, um, look at your life. Look at what you're doing. How does it make you feel? Yeah. How does it make you feel? When, when you get up to go to work in the morning, um, how does it, what do you feel? Um, okay. And that's, that's really important. That's what probably Tony Robbins talks about. Um, it's like if I stay here, and I go here, how's it going to make me feel? More so, if you stay here, you're going to be angry and sad and all that good right. stuff. If you move into the unknown, you might, it might be frightening. Yeah. But it's, I'm telling you, Jamie, when you make the choice to step into your purpose and what you're here to do, so many doors open up that you would never believe would open up. <laughs> Amazing, Jeff. Amazing. I can't tell you how many, I mean, probably so many people watching this are going to get inspired, but I'm inspired. This strikes a chord with me. Just uh -huh. forget everyone else. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Because, because that is awesome. And, and that's the kind of thing that Jeff Asano, ladies and gentlemen, does on his social media channels regularly. Regularly, you do some great talks. You do some great talks with some great guests. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about photography, right? So you don't think I reeled you in for your life advice and life story. <laughs> <laughs> awesome jeff okay so obviously um when did you start falling in love with music because you said you love music and, and you always loved music you had a passion is this something that you had growing up uh yeah yeah yep and what were the records uh, that shaped you the who the who nice <laughs> nice 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 I, I i tell the story i remember uh i was with my friend danny black we, i'm from staten island yeah. And after school one day, uh, we were all athletes. I played football, baseball, hockey in high school. Danny played football. And after practice, whatever, we go, went over to his house one day. And his brother, his older brother, Tommy, walks in with this record that's brand new. And he, sa and he opens it up, opens the packaging, and he puts it on. And I was listening to it going, what, who, what is this? Who is this? And it was um, uh, the 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 album with Bob O'Reilly on it. Um, yeah, uh, that's um. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about, right? Oh my god, who's next? Who? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we should. Right, right, right. Okay. Right. And, he, and he put on who's next, and and I just, I I just went, 
Yeah. It, it turned on so many light bulbs for me. And uh, yeah. And they're still, and to me, Quadrophenia is still the greatest record of oh. all time. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, John Oates, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> uh, Quite but the yeah. that's, that, was, that, was, that was it. And yes, the band, yes. Yes, the band, yes, right. And, and that was the first, first concert I ever saw. Yeah, not that. 19, 1974. Oh, that, that's a great combo right there. But yeah, the who, the who does that too? Even even recently, uh, just before the pandemic last year, in September, I saw them. Uh, you know, it was like my third or fourth time seeing them, and they still got it. They still, you know, they're not as mobile, but the voices are still there, and the uh, the epic sound that just takes over the arena. It's there. So absolutely amazing. Yeah, I saw them. I saw them in 1974 at Madison Square Garden, the Quadrophenia tour with the you know with Keith, the original band, yeah. oh. smashing their their equipment. It was. Epic. Yeah. Oh, oh was, my God. It was Jeff. amazing. So that's, that's, that's the band that did it. And then, um, you know, uh, I love music. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a musician. Yeah. Um, I love musicians. Yeah. More so I love artists. I'm an yeah. artist. I love the artistic process um, of any artist, you know, whether it be an interior designer, a cook, and, uh, an author. Um, I had the good fortune of shooting for Gotham Magazine in New York City, and they sent me out to photograph all those types of people. Yeah. Chefs. And I would always ask them, so what's your process? And, it was, and, and they're artists. And, you know, a cook, a chef showing me how to, you know, make this dish. And, yeah. Uh, and, uh, an interior designer, how what they feel when they design a room, the writing process of an author. Yeah, um, I love I love artists. I love I love the way we think. Yeah, and yeah. watching John Oates write a song, mm. unbelievable is and and how he arranges a song is. I got to see with my own eyes, and it's 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 masterful. That's why he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Absolutely. That's why. Oh, that's great. That's, I love your stories, man. It's like, it's like the music passion. Just it's great. A plus. And Jeff, how has technology changed the photography industry? Right. Because you've seen the whole thing uh, now with these iPhones, with these crazy cameras. What's your take on all this on the new? Has it changed it or what, how or it hasn't? Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a real interesting question. Uh, um, I'm, I'm an, I'm an old school guy. Yeah. Um, I go, like I mentioned Mario Cabrera earlier, who was my mentor. I studied with him two years at the new school in New York City. And um, the photographers he turned me on to were photographers like Eugene Smith, Dorothea Lang, Walker Evans, the masters. Show. They're all the masters. Hmm. And when I looked at their work and then you look at Eugene Smith's work, he printed everything. He was a master, master printer. I have actually a photographer friend here in Nashville who, who studied with him a little bit. Yeah. Um, when I go back to that, for me, I still look at those prints and I say, I still, that's what I still need to get. Yeah. What the, what the difference for me is now is just a new way of doing it. You're not, you know, shooting with film. Um, you are not going into a dark room. But the process for me is still the same. Pick up your digital camera. I still see what I see as if I was seeing the final print. Um, I still look at it that way for many photographers uh, actually and and photographers who who i know young and old mm -hmm. if you're a core photographer you're still in coming from those basic principles of seeing light and then just to me the tools have changed this computer here is my dark room and that's how i look at it um I always go back to, um, it doesn't matter what camera you're using. 
because it's 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 you that's just a tool mm -hmm. you don't it doesn't matter the camera you're using henry diltz still uses his 5d mark ii mm. all right and you know who henry diltz is yeah um and <laughs> it, it really doesn't matter um uh, the equipment that you're using uh but what photoshop and lightroom has done is added new ways of creating in my world in my opinion computer art mm -hmm. okay there's a reason why i brought up eugene smith dorothea lang and walker evans right okay dorothea lang's show was here a year ago she phot photographed the migrant workers in in california and many other amazing projects amazing mm -hmm. that's photography photography for me when you look at an image and you look at the person and you look into their eyes how does it make you feel that image has got to bring about an emotion in you from that photographer capturing that that moment so if you go and look at Eugene Smith's work, Walker Evans's work, Dorothea Lange's work, you could look at one print and sit there and you'll be riveted at everything that it's bringing up in you. Wow. To me, that's what it's about. That's what musicians are writing about. That's what their lyrics are about. That's what a song is about. Yeah. It's about how it makes you feel. What is that image saying to you? Then in turn, after you see a photographer's array of images, you'll find out what that photographer is feeling and saying with their work. Yeah. So I don't know if that might be a roundabout way to answer your question. It's perfect. But that's where I still live. Yeah. Um, and I don't, you know, if it's I'm not tough. feeling it, then to me, if I'm not, if I see something and I'm not feeling it next. Yeah. If it doesn't hit me here next. Sure. Wow. Wow, Jeff, I'm sure you have many examples of this, but have you, what examples come to mind of subjects that you, you've captured on camera and you've captured something through the lens that you have not, that you had not previously seen with your eyes, basically. Oh, wow. Um, I want to take a step backward. Okay. One of the things that Mario Cabrera taught me as my teacher and mentor is that in the moment you take your camera, put it up to your eye. Yeah. You know what the final print's going to look like before you click the shutter. Interesting. That's okay. the training that I had with him that when you pick that camera up, you're not thinking about um, Photoshop and this, that, and the other thing. It, um, you, you're picking up that camera and you're looking and you're seeing the light and you know exactly what that final print's gonna look like and then you go click. Mm. You see it, you, you feel it, you see it, you feel it uh, within you. Sometimes there are, there are surprises, but when I'm shooting, and I feel that moment and you know it and I just know it. And then it goes click. It's like that moment you feel like it's not even, you're not even seeing it. You're feeling it and feeling the energy of who you're working with. Um, you know, you've got it. I mean, you know, you walk away and, and, and you've got it. And, um, and then when I go back to look at the shoe, I'll remember those shots. Of course. But then there's occasionally a time where, um, for example, I, I photographed uh, back in February, Mac McAnally. Okay. He's a great songwriter and he just put out a new record and they hired me to shoot the new record and, and, um, and stuff like that and PR. And um, it was great. And yeah. it was a great shoot and the lighting was fantastic. But to answer your question, as I was going through, I saw a photo that I didn't remember taking. <laughs> I wound up to be one of my favorites in, in that group. 
Yeah. I went, whoa, I don't remember, you know, and that happens. That's amazing. And that was just back in February. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, Jeff. Where do you keep all your, all your photos in computers? Like, like where, where's all your, or your database? Well, I've got many boxes of prints yeah. and negatives in my closets. Love it. And then I've got everything on hard drives. Perfect. Backed Jeff, up, backed do, up and backed up. Do you mind if we, if we see a few, just a handful of photos that I, um, like I'll show, I'll show my screen with you. Yeah, and sure. And like maybe, maybe you tell us like what you were, uh, what you saw. Cool, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for, uh, no, this, this has been so, so insightful, Jeff. Let's see. Let's see. Cause I, I made a little folder for you. Let's see. See if I find it. Every every photographer has there's a every photographer has a story about every image they've ever taken. Perfect, perfect. Okay, let me see. Okay, where is it? Here it is. All right, let's start. <laughs> there's so many. There's so, there's so many. There's so many. It was impossible to pick, by the way. Okay, it was like a kid in a candy store. Oh my god! Let's just go my with god, that. My god! My god! But uh, when you see this photo, beautiful photo, of, uh, what, why don't you tell us uh, what was going on right there? Okay, so um, I do a backstage portrait project at City Winery here in Nashville. And uh, we started four years ago. Um, and it's been amazing. I, I go backstage a couple of times a week, do portraits of the artists. And um, it's also been lucrative many of the artists have used used them for record covers and pr uh but this was the first one yeah this was the very very first uh night and wow. ian hunter just happened to be playing at city winery <laughs> and um i'm a one of my all-time favorite bands is Mott the hoople yeah amazing and uh i wish i got to see them but i never did Mm -hmm. I've been a huge Ian Hunter fan. Nice. Uh, my friend Jim Mastro is a guitar player in his band. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited to go that night because I've seen Ian countless times. And I was so excited to go see him and meet him for the first time. And, and right. Mastro was, was a great liaison there. Lucinda is also a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. and, great great um, new record, by the way. Shout out to her new record, yeah. And uh, we, met, we met when I lived in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I didn't know she was, was gonna be there. And, and um, after the show, um, everybody came back. We, we, Ian and I shot before the show. Everybody came back. I came backstage, was hanging out. And I asked Ian, you mind if I just, you know, be a fly on the wall and take photographs? Said, I don't care, mate. Uh, <laughs> and I was doing that and uh, they were just standing together. Wow. And they were talking, and uh, I think somebody over here grabbed their attention, and I went, click. And uh, Lucinda was always saying, uh, Jeff, you're trying to be like Jim Marshall. <laughs> and, and Jim Marshall was actually a friend of mine. Um, but the cool part of that night is Tom Peterson from Cheap Trick was back there as well. Oh. Very nice, wonderful yeah. event. Yeah, it's a beautiful photo. I love uh, losing the size in there. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, let's go to the to the man, the myth, the legend. Ah. <laughs> I think you captured so so much detail here. I love it. Um, that's at John's house. Hmm. Um, the. That was for a guitar aficionado magazine That's, that sadly is no longer in print. And they were doing an article uh, with John and uh, about him, but also his love for cars. Yeah. So it was a combination. And they just hired me, you know. I met John in... Um, in Memphis, Tennessee at Diddy TV, give Diddy TV a shout out, um, right before Christmas and took some photos. And then when they had to do the shoot, uh, they called me and said, you know, hey Jeff, would you come in and do this? And we were at his house and um, I was on the phone with him the other day and I said, 
there's another great photo of him that I love that I shot at City Winery. And there are so many images of John, like holding his guitar, looking at you and stuff like that. And I'm a fan of John's on so many levels, especially um, our, the, the album Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Think is a, I think it's a masterpiece, beautiful, amazing record. And I was in the studio when they were recording it. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to photograph John playing his guitar. Mm. I always just, I didn't want John to look at me. I didn't want to do, I just said, John, because I think John's a really good guitar player. Yeah, absolutely. And I just said, John, just play. Play, just play. And he goes, okay, man. And he was, and that's, that's what I wanted to capture in, in, in this image. Oh my God. And it's, and it's only lit with a little 500 watt light coming from, uh, you see that you see, you see it on his face from his yeah. website. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you're right. And maybe here on the, on the couch, that's wonderful. Okay. Love it. Oh my God, the narration you're giving me. I, I encourage the audio audience to check this particular episode out in video because this is a priceless one. Okay, this one is also super cool. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so when I lived in LA, uh, gonna drop another name. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows Michael DeBar. Michael's a very good friend of mine. And Michael used to have a show on um, a station called T Radio V in LA. Mm -hmm. I'm uh -huh. sure they're still around. Michael had a show, um, which was, they had a television station and it was also on their, you know, radio station as well. And um, I said, hey, Michael, why don't I come down and, you know, shoot you with your guests and shoot portraits of the guests. And he goes, yeah, cool, come on down. So uh, we've, we had some amazing people on that show. Yeah. We, we had Gene Simmons and um, Priscilla Presley, it, you know, it goes on. It wasn't just musicians. It was actors and, and some politicians were on the show as well. Right. So Moby came in and we were, he and I were talking. And Moby looks at me and says, um, you know, I'm, I'm a photographer. I went, oh, really? Really? I didn't know that. He said, uh, um, yeah. He said, do you use Lightroom? And I'm saying, yeah, a little bit here and there. And then we just started talking about photography. And he goes, hey, I'm going to be doing a show in L.A. I just moved here from New York. And I go, me too. I just moved here from New York. Um, he, was, he was amazing. We took some shots. In T Radio V, they have a ping pong table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Um, I was just standing there and then he put, picks up a racket. Michael pick up a racket and they start playing. So I start shooting and then he's just sitting there, standing there doing this. Yeah. And he's doing it. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking and he looks at me and he stopped and I go, no, no, keep doing, but do it and look at me. And that's how I got that. <laughs> oh this my God. That's I, how, yeah, it's like, it's, that's how you would imagine Moby to be, kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. I mean, okay. it's really, really interesting and very cool guy. Yeah. Let's do a couple more, Jeff, because like I said, if people want to check out your portfolio, I mean, you can be there for hours, okay? But uh, this, is just a, this is just a little tease, teaser sample. Ah. I love this one, too. <laughs> ah. Miss ah. John Osborne. It's my second, my second shoot with my, my good friend, Joan. Um, we, uh, that's her car, by the way. And I drove that baby. <laughs> I, I, um, so, so if you know, Joan did a record, uh, sing, Joan and Osborne sings Bob Dylan. Yep, yep. That came out a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, they call me one day and they say, um, I had done a shoot previous with Joan PR and stuff for an inside of her last record. And then they said, Joan is doing a record of Bob Dylan. Uh, we want you to shoot it. And I was like, all right, cool. And what we're going to do is do you remember the famous Elliot Landy shot of Bob Dylan in Woodstock? 
Oh my God, no, I don't remember it. Okay, so he shot it with infrared film and Dylan has got his guitars sitting on the hood of an old, leaning on the hood of an old white car. Okay. And the trees in the background, because it was infrared film, were all red, but he mm -hmm. was in black and white. When you shoot with infrared film, the contrast is amazing. Yeah. And, um, but that's what you get. And you got it and you got to, you got to process it in total darkness. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy, but he did that. But then he also shot Dylan all around Woodstock as he did the band and many other great artists. Sure. Wow. And Joan says, do you know those photographs? I said, yeah. She goes, well, that's what we want to do. And we're going to, you know, loosely replicate what he did with Dylan in Woodstock. Now, Joan uh, doesn't live far from Woodstock. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said to Joan, so where are you getting the car? And she goes, I, I have a car. And that's the car. Nice. And it was in her garage. So um, I drove it to this spot. It died. <laughs> Literally, it died. Um, I don't know how the heck I, you know, he drove it out and, and there it is. And it's, it's amazing. It's got, amazing. it's just, I, I, I don't even know what year that car is. It's in the 50s or something like that. Beautiful. What car um, is it? So we did, the, we did the shots of her sitting on the front of the car. And uh, then we did shots of her sitting on the back of the car. Then we did this and that. And I said, uh, Joan, hop, hop in the car. And I opened the door. And I just said, just, you know, sit in the, sit in the seat and put your feet up. And uh, she goes, okay. And then we like, okay, I'm not sure what the, we're going to use these for, but this is pretty... Pretty cool. So we, we did this, but the funny part about it was the, the road is really narrow. The car took up the entire road and I am squeezed into the side, all of this, this um, uh, like if you look on the other side of the car, you see all the trees, it was in October. Yeah. It's all this dirt and gravel and I'm in, in there and, and there are other shots from this sequence where she's laughing because I'm contorting my body trying to get that. And we had to get her to stop laughing because she was laughing at me. <laughs> and then she, well, we, we took them. This wound up being in the vinyl edition of this. When you open up the vinyl, yeah. there is this photograph. Absolutely. And that goes to show you like, oh, what, 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 what you, you never know in a photo shoot what is gonna work for what, or what the artist and her team is gonna choose. But here's, here's the, the interesting part of this photo. Yeah. You see, you see the bottom of her shoes? Yes. That purple? Yeah. That's purple tape. Oh, okay. Because the stylist had to bring the shoes back. Oh, <laughs> look at that, inside info, I love it. All right, so that purple tape, I mean, you look how you see how dirty it is because yeah. we were, it's, a, it's a gravelly dirt road. Um, so in order for her to bring the shoes back, she had to pull that tape off. Yeah, now that you mention it, yeah, that's tape, 100%. And every time I think of, think of that, I look and I see the purple tape. Oh my God, <laughs> I love but, it. Yeah. I can't unsee the tape now, perfect. Great photo, hey, the colors. The best everywhere. part of that shoot was driving that car. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Are you a car guy, like, like, like John, or, or not really? No, I'm not a big car guy, but when I saw that, I said, Joan, I'm driving it. Yeah. So she goes, here, threw me the keys, and she goes, you're driving. I was like, all right. Great I had to story. back that thing out of her garage and pull it down that street. Oh, I love it, Jeff. Great story. All right, one more for you. Thank you so much. This is so fun, by the way. Cool. Ah. This is great. This is great because I've seen these tricks a few times and you just captured what they are in every way. Wow, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so this was, this was taken at um, the Austin City Limits Music Festival. Yeah. Um, a whole bunch of moons ago. Uh, I um, know the shout out for Paste Magazine. Mm. Paste Magazine put me on the map in, in the music world. Nice. Um, 
when I they I met them at South by Southwest and then they called me to shoot Wilco mm -hmm. for the cover and and the inside and all that good stuff. Yeah. And then I did a couple of more things with them. And then um, I used to travel to South by Southwest with them every year and then go to ACL and I set up that is a black background behind them on in the tent. I put up a big black background and we would photograph um, all the artists. Okay. As many artists as, as they could get, you know, yeah. they were paced. They were very influential. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know who Tegan and Sarah were, mm. but they were so cool. And, uh, and they came by, and I think she's holding her keys. Oh, yeah. In, in that. <laughs> uh, and um, so we were just shooting in all these different ways. And she just put her arms over her sister. Mm -hmm. And I just went, whoa. I went click, click, click. You always take things with me. Click, click, click. Yeah. And that happened to be... Um, it's a little cropped. I cropped it a little bit, mm -hmm. but that was the, they were sweethearts. I did not know. Here's the cool part. Yeah. So I photographed them and they were sweeties. They were great. They were gracious. They hung out. Um, mm -hmm. Pace Magazine's tents used to be the focal point of backstage at, at, um, at ACL for those bunch of years. Yeah. Um, and then they said, come and see us. And I go, where are you playing? And they were playing one of the bigger stages. Mm -hmm. And I went, all right, I'll come. So I went, went down. I, did, I could not believe how huge they were. Yeah. And, and, and then I saw them later. I'm going, oh, wow, you guys are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they played on one of, the, one of the main stages, one of the three main stages. And it was packed and... They were rocking and rolling, and, and, and that was one of the. And that's so cool because it was a. That's the fun part of doing this, of the surprises. Yeah. That happened. Yeah. Like I, I, I had heard of them. I didn't know who they were. Uh, they were, you know, Paste Magazine wrote about them, mm -hmm. and Paste Magazine said, "Hey, we'd like to bring Tegan and Sarah over." And I said, "Sure." And they were sweet. And the, you know, the reason why I went to see them. Tell me. It's because they were so nice. Ah. Oh. I mean, you can just see it in their eyes. Just, yeah. you know, that's the, it's beautiful. Wow. I remember them going, will, will you come and see us? <laughs> yeah. Will you come and see us? And I was like, I thought they were playing, you know, a smaller stage. Boom. Boom. And they I were, they rocked it. Yeah. Yeah. They really do. Right. Well, oh, well that's, that's the end of this. Uh, this session, Jeff. Thank you so much for for, for um for doing this part. That was that was awesome. Ah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Jeff, you've been so generous with your time. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> this is what I said. Some of these interviews, when when they're with magical people, time just flies, Jeff. But um, ah, cool, cool. I think I think it's a good time to leave it here and uh, just you know just thank you. Oh, Jamie, it's, it's been a pleasure. I'm glad that uh, I saw your comment on that image. Oh, the image that you saw on uh, Instagram was, if was you remember it, it, was it that same one? Yeah, that was, it wasn't the same one. It was the it was same session, right? It was, it was the same spot on his couch in his living room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? It's, it, it's, I, I, when you wrote to me, I was so happy because, you know, like a gut feeling, just, just a gut feeling. And I, I just knew that, uh, that you were a special kind of human being. And I'm so glad that we were. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely.